ACT Science Tutoring Packet, Answer Key Part 3. So we've already covered intro and uh, charts and graphs. Now we're going to talk about experiments. What's called a research summary if you want to be highfalutin about it. Uh, it takes your data analysis from before and, and kind of cranks it up because now you have to answer some questions, not just what happened, but why do you think that happened. So read through this. There's an objective and method results. The objective is a big one. If you kind of get your brain wrapped around that, there'll be a question about it. There'll be a question that ties into it somehow. Uh, the method is important because we're going to get to um, independent and dependent. They'll put a chart. And often the first column is a label. A lot of people are taught, oh, that's the independent variable. Might be. More likely it's a label, you know, experiments A, B, C, and D. Then you've got independent variable here and dependent variable here. Um, independent, independent leads to dependent. Independent, we pick. We're in charge. We know what's going on. Dependent is the result of measuring. Measure things, that's a dependent variable. We pick what we're going to do, that's the independent variable. There also might be a control variable. And that's the closest thing we have to doing nothing. We have a bunch of plants. We put this and that. We do the other. The control plant is the one that just, we didn't do anything. We just measured it based on what would have happened if we hadn't even been there. So watch out for that. Results and common questions. Identify. And this goes back to the charts. You know, what's on your axis? What's going on here? So always know what's going on and the difference between experiment one and experiment two. We'll jump in and do some drills. All right, plants exhibit a certain behavior, phototropism, they bend toward the light. Here's the experiments. Again, you should pause this and read these. It's a pretty straightforward. Looks like light is uh, sensed by the tip of the plant and then it sends a signal to the middle part of the plant to the upper tip of the plant and says bend please so that's basically what you're getting out of this so results of experiment one and experiment two indicate that the plant requires both sunlight and nutrition in order to bend well no i don't know what that even means the tip of the plant detects light source yeah i read that light proof cap assist no didn't do anything like that is the amount of sunlight that causes the bending plant no just light in general Two, which of the following plants serves as a control? What do we not do anything to? What do we just leave alone? Plant one. They're the ones we messed with them. Based on the results of experiments one through four, it can be concluded that, so okay, hey, here's what happened. Now, why do you think it happened? Strength of the sun rays correlated? No. Never got into the strength. We never measured strength. Never talked about strength. Flowering plants? We never talked about flowering plants. Don't know where that even came from. Tip of the plant must. That one's not finished, so I have to figure out what happened on that there. That's kind of embarrassing. Uh, I believe it says the tip of the plant must um, sense that the light's coming, so i got to go fix that. Flowering plants respond to light quite differently than do non-flowering plants. Nothing about flowering plants. Suppose the tip of the flowering plant is cut off in the presence of a light source. A new tip does not grow. What will be the response? It's not going to do anything. It's not going to bend towards the light because... We figured out the tip actually senses the light. So, yeah, there we have it. Second experiment. Geology. Stratification. Go ahead and take a second to read it. Pause it if you need to. Three studies. And then an interesting little sidebar. Hang on. To give you time to read that. Let's see if I gave you enough room. So study one and study two. Pause it. Study two, kind of three. And then, oh, by the way, the following table gives the types of fossilized organisms normally found. This is pretty critical. This is like a key. You're going to want to keep an eye on that. It could cause you all sorts of problems. Could be very helpful. Which of the following findings would not be consistent with the types of fossils normally found in the black shale formation? So, number one, 
periwinkles, clams, oyster sponges. How the heck would I know? Well, let's look at the black shale. Small marine animal fossils. All right, well, that doesn't really help me. I don't know what a periwinkle is. So down here, black shale. Snails, clams, oysters, and periwinkles. Snails, clams, oysters, and periwinkles. So that one got real confusing for people who did not look over all the data. So that's what we mean by skim but read. Okay, okay, there's some important information at the bottom. If I get confused, go look at it. So you got D for number one. Based on the information presented in the studies, it could be inferred remains of ancient pine needles we found in what type of rocks? We're looking for plant fossils, so I'm going to go with coal. So it's got marine, marine, vertebrate, none of that. Given the sequence of rock formation in studies one and two, what might have been the ordered? So you look at the one, two, and three, and you put them together. It goes limestone, black shale, coal, black shale, coal, sandstone. Limestone, black shale, coal, and sandstone. And that's from putting this to this, and then actually looking at this, making sure limestone, then coal, then sandstone, black shale fits in here. Limestone fits in here. you got to kind of think that one through. There's no neat and easy way to look at that and say, oh, that's obvious. Number four, sequence of rock formations in study three is similar but not identical in one and two. What do you think caused that? Well, they talked about weathering. I didn't say what it was. Now, a mild rainstorm does not qualify as weathering because it's just a little bit of water. Heavy-duty rain would do it. Extreme heat's not going to do it. Wind might do it. So you get to, you know, cross these off. I love this. Cohesion. I don't even know what they're talking about with cohesion. So, goofy. Third experiment. Well, physics, like I said, this tends to cause problems. So, pause and read. And then we've got this sort of stuff. Now let's go answer some questions. For the trials, it can be included that displacement of an object depends on the... We talk about length? No. We talk about density? No. Talk about height of the wooden block? No. Talk about the force? Yes, which comes from the mass. So number one is B. Number two, the downward force of nine pounds is placed. So we got a little interpolating or extrapolating to go to here. Nine right here. Uh, looks like we go about five inches. Eh, 4.5 it is. All right, it's not perfect. Just gets us in the general ballpark. I feel like I made a mistake. No, that's about right. Let me reread this. Downward force of 9 pounds is placed. The approximate displacement. X. Yeah, perfect. When sorry, something was bothering me. When the weight of the mass attached to the spring is doubled, yeah, good. Uh, what happened? When the mass is doubled, displacement remains the same. No, displacement is halved. No. Displacement is quadrupled. No. Displacement is doubled. All right. 8 to 16 gets us 48 doubled. Now I've got two actual passages for you. Read them, figure them out. I'm just going to circle answers in the interest of time. Cute little experiment with fish and predators. So again, here's your answers. And 
them short one answer. That's a little surprising. Students conducting experiments made which of the following assumptions about chemical cues? They could get through the barrier. And one more. Pause and read. there. Pause and read. And then, like I said, I'm just going to give you some answers. And again, I'm missing an answer. Q. Reputational energy of the pin bob is greatest when the bob is loose from which value? In experiment one. All right. Hope you were able to pause that before I put up your answers. If not, rewind and stop it. Uh, lots of good stuff here. Hopefully the practice is starting to kick in and starting to help a little bit. Keep working hard. Good luck.